Hey guys, and welcome back to West of Loathing. Uh, so, uh, we're going to be jumping, uh, right in. But, uh, before... Uh, I, I don't know what I'm doing. It's been a while. It's been, like, a week since I played this game. Um, before, uh, we head up to, uh, Reboot Hill, which is the place that we're gonna head next... I just want to uh, tell you guys, uh, I now have a Twitch account, uh, the Dino Lord, uh, once again, and uh, from there I'm going to start streaming uh, my new project that I've been working on. It should come out this weekend. It's a D&D show I call Critical Failure. Uh, from now on. I'm going to uh, be posting, or at least streaming there, uh, uh, once or twice a week, or uh, once or twice a weekend. And, oh, okay, we just go right into an encounter. Um, you spot a small makeshift signpost stuck into the ground a few yards away from the road, and stop to check it out. It says, free meat. And indeed, there's a small pile of meat lying in front of it. You're so distracted from rolling your eyes at this obvious trap, you almost missed the goblin sneaking up behind you. He's wearing an old buffalo skull as a helmet, which you have to admit looks really metal. I gotta hand it to you. You nearly got me. Good job. Ah, foolish human falling for my clever trap. Now you are giving me valuables or I beating you up. You know, this may be the first time I've been mugged by a goblin. Usually you guys are more or less peaceful. I'm smart like human. Why making things myself when robbing easier? Smart like human is a very accurate description of that I idea. Yeah. Well, I mean, fair point. Alright, I'll talk to it. Giving me your stuff or hitting you? Calming, calming down. We coming to some kind of agreement? Agreeing with either taking stuff or hitting. Uh, offer to teach stuff. Uh, after some back and forth, the goblin agrees to leave you unhit if you teach it how to sneak set up a better ambush you give him some pointers on sneak attacks and how to spell meat and he begrudgingly lets you go all right that goblin is going to mug someone it's not gonna be me though so i don't care who boy that looks like blood don't worry ah uh, it's just paint huh Alright, what's going on? I want to make sure that I don't miss any secrets. My first time uh, back playing in over a week. Um, uh, ha! Uh, I did it! There's a keyhole in the trunk of the strange tree. I don't have a key. I'll have to deal with that in the future. Oh, I guess I can't go past this point. Alright, let's go! Oh boy, that's a ghost. Steal yourself for battle, gentlemen. And women. We have one woman viewer. 20%. That's a, a awful demographic. Then again, I have five subscribers. Why do I even pretend that I'm the fucking famous as YouTuber? The Twitch account. Ah, great. Alright, you see the ghost of an elderly woman holding flowers. She seems lost and depressed, above and beyond what's expected for a ghost. Howdy, ma'am. Is there something I can help you with? Oh, it's awful. I can't remember. I can't remember at all. Oh, shit. Can't keep doing that voice. Alright, let's start at the beginning, okay? Well, you see, I had four daughters. They mattered four brothers, the Smith boys. And after that, they each had five daughters of their own. Unfortunately, I outlived every one of the 24 of them. Um, you uh, know you're a ghost, right? Oh yes, in fact, I died here in this graveyard, where they all buried. I came to visit them, and I suppose my poor heart finally gave out. That's not the problem, though. 95 years is a pretty good run, after all. So, what did you forget? I brought this bouquet of flowers to put on my favorite granddaughter's grave, but I can't remember which of them was my favorite. I'm so ashamed. I can't bear to leave until I've remembered. I see. Maybe I can help you figure it out. Oh, thank you. I'd appreciate that ever so much. No problem, ma'am. 
Can you remember anything about your granddaughter? Uh, hold on one second. I need to go get a piece of paper. I'll be back in just a second. Alright, and I'm back. Uh, can you remember anything about your granddaughter? Uh, I'm certain her first name ended in a vowel. Okay. Uh, anything else? I remember I was 40 when she was born. Or 37 or 42. It must have been somewhere in that range, at least. Okay, so 42 to 37. Uh, okay. And if she's 95, so it has to be, so, I'm assuming that she's going to be 95 and she died visiting them, like, just a second ago and not, like, uh, not, like, a year ago when she's been trying to figure this out. So, she's 95, that means it would be 53 to... Fifth, wait, hold on. Fifty-eight, right? So, uh, fifty-three to fifty-eight years ago. What year is this? Crap. All right. Uh, anything else? Her first name was longer than her last. Okay. Name is longer than last. Okay, anything else? I remember she wasn't buried next to any of my daughters. Okay, so not next to the daughters. Alright, so anything else? Uh, same age as poor Becky, who was always in such ill health. Okay, same age as Becky. Uh, anything else? Uh, ha favorite hobby was knitting. She, uh, she starts to sob. Uh, she knit me such a lovely sweater for Crimbo just the year before she died. And that's all I can remember. Uh, knitting. Alright. Chief. I'll be back in a minute. Little Becky Smith. Hey, Becky. So she passed in eight. Oh, it was the same age. So that would be at the age of ooh sixteen. That's not good. Pamela Smith. Uh, I'll be back in a minute. So I'm assuming you are the granddaughters and Lilith Smith, Pearl Smith. Pen ultimate. Are you kidding me? So it could also be 24. Wait, hold on. Make sure I'm not missing anyone. Leslie Smith. So. I'm assuming that these are the two daughters and not the granddaughters. So that means these six are out. Which means that this one, Penelope Smith. Okay. Patricia Smith. Okay. So you two are granddaughters. First, are you kidding me? Who oh boy. Alright, so that's, uh, 38? Let, Little War Smith, uh, Paula Smith, uh, Fiona Smith, Faye Smith, Liliana, uh, Lani Smith, Linda Smith, Margaret Smith. So, I know that you are a daughter. So, that means it can't be Madeline. So, it's Faith Smith. Fit, Fidelity Smith. Farrah Smith. A loosely packed grave. A uh, uh, coffin that was apparently delivered by mail. It still has the address printed on it. Somebody going to Hellstrom Ranch I've, after they die. Uh, it's... Uh, 
Okay. So they have to die at 16, 24, 38. Their name has to end in a vowel. Uh, they have to be uh, a first name longer than last. All right. So we can immediately overrule all of these six because uh, they're there. Uh, Penelope Smith. It could be Penelope. Wait, hold on. 36. No. She's 50. That means it can't be Penelope. Which means Patricia. Uh, Patricia is. Or was, I guess. 24. I think it could be Patricia. Okay. Uh, first Becky Smith. Can't be Becky, right? Because it wouldn't make any sense. Why Why would it be Becky is the same age as Becky? Plus, its ages are different. Lenore Smith. Uh, okay. Uh, three, six. It could be a Lenore. Lilani Smith. Okay, so it has to be greater than five letters. Uh, the first name has to be greater than five letters. No, that's 15, not 16. Paula Smith. That's... Oh, shit. She passed away at five. Patricia Smith. Fiona Smith. That's not. That's 39, right? That's 39 years old, so not. Okay. Faye Smith. That would be 15. Linda Smith. Can't be because the names. Uh, the names are identical or identical letters. There are five letters in each, so. Margaret Smith. It can't be you because it has to be the granddaughter. Madeline Smith. Oh, wait a minute. They all died. Okay. Uh, okay, so hold on. Madeline Smith, 1836, 1875. So that's... Un that's... Uh, Okay, it doesn't fit. Plus, you're next to Margaret. Which means these two are probably also out. I mean, if they weren't already. Oh, shit. I didn't get Mezzo Becky Smith. So that could be 50. Wasn't there someone who lived for 50 years? Uh. Oh, yeah, Penelope. It could be Penelope Smith. Margaret, Madeline, uh, Mezzo, Magdalene. That's 23. Doesn't add up. Uh, that's 8. That's 38. Melissa Smith. Uh... I think that can work, Melissa. Farah Smith, uh, that's 51, doesn't add up. Fidelity Smith, that's 49. No, that doesn't work. Uh, Faith Smith, that's 15, doesn't work. Okay, so is there any... Oh, why did I think this was going to be easy? You know what, knowing this game, it could probably be all four of them. Or it could probably be one of the four. I, uh, I mean, better start crossing names off the list. Can't be F. Let's, let's play the odds. Is it P? Was it PA? Patricia. Wait, no. Shit, if it's not Patricia. 
which means it has to be okay so if it isn't Patricia uh, Pamela that's 16 Pam uh, Pamela Smith why did she get left off because Pamela Smith is 16 so that should work oh wait no she's not next to she's next to these two so it can't be Pamela Oh, it's, uh, it's probably some fucking joke. You know, it's, uh... Yeah, Patricia, it's, uh... It can't be Patricia. First Becky Smith, Paula's... Yeah, it can't be Paul. I bet it's a... So, I can officially say that it's not P.A. So, which means we have to check the other three, uh, I guess, on the next day. Because she wants to be al alone... So I guess, uh, well, I mean, once you, uh, get, once you die, are you fucking kidding me? There are some of them over here. Rebecca Smith, Billy Spider McKinley, turned out to be way more than one. <laughs> okay, it's a Billy Spiders McKinley. Wise old Jet Marmot. This time the bar ate him. The ground here seems reasonably soft. Sure, uh, dig it up. Marmot skin cat wait old shed marsh ah. all right uh plus seven pistol attack damage and plus six mysticality is better kind Peggy immortal kind of ironic <laughs> what an absolute mad lad all right big bob hurling him gone to the big pie eating contest in the sky. <laughs> Tripe pie increases your muscle by five. Nice. He was a real butt face. Sinley Crandallsworth. Uh, he was sort of like Benj Benjamin Button kind of thing. And it <laughs> tried to eat her way out of a bear. Really, he's gonna hate this burial thing. Clean Willie Hinks. Buck Jeansley. Never. Nobody ever saw a man die that way. A uh, whole gang buried in here. Ha, you can't beat me. Oh, Jesus, that's... That's some powerful black voodoo right there. 114, 117, 108, 112, 97. Guys, I think I'm gonna have to do it to him. I'm gonna have to do it. It's time. I spam my items. I know. You said it wasn't possible. You said no man could ever disrespect some skeletons like that. And here I am, proving you all wrong. You mess with my, uh, uh, uh Gary. My pet? My goblin. Uh, you mess with him. You mess with all of us. Uh, what deals a lot of damage? Target will get what? Uh, target will be disabled. Uh, one hot damage. Uh, silver bullet, chemical. Uh. I'll just deal damage to all of them using a uh, Great Northern Blizzard. Oh, uh, I need. I'll also use Bean Wall just in case. All right, so uh, uh, oh, that's a lot of Bean Walls. I didn't mean to do that. Oh, then I hit him again. I might as well knock him dead. Well, this at least this way it's um, pretty much impervious to uh, ranged attacks. Then again, uh, the only le the ones left are magical and uh, physical attacks. So, wait, are magic attacks stopped by uh, walls? I don't think they are because uh, that wouldn't make much sense because it just deals direct damage. I mean, the enemies might focus this. In fact, uh, the physical dealers might have to go through it. 
They might. I'm not sure. Here I am bumbling on about stuff that I don't even know. Uh, alright. Well, there, uh, yeah, it turns out me, uh, fighting a billion snakes in Snake Spring actually helped out a bit. Smelling salts. Uh, 50 hot damage, so I just need to take you down to... Alright. Alright, so... Here we go. So now all we have to do is take out this guy, uh, just 10 more. Then I can attack you with uh, my fireball magic. And uh, I win. But jeez, I'm using a lot of items. I might have to go back to Snake Spring over uh, uh, next time, but. Or before next time, I guess. But yeah, uh, so some more info on critical failure is. Because. I didn't know how to do this because I'm stupid. As it turns out, you're uh, you're going to be uh, seeing my first campaign ever as a DM. Actually, my first campaign ever, ever. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons. And you're going to see that. And you're going to start in the middle of the campaign because I didn't know how to record. So I, I didn't, so... He realized the sweet gang. May they never wake up. Take the sword. Sweet sword. Plus six moxie. Uh, 12 to 15 damage. Not bad. Uh, ooh, I have 802 experience. I could do so much shit. But first, lava fava. Because I, I just want to max that shit out. Because that's what I'm going to be using. Black Excalibur. That's plus six muscle and does stench instead of physical damage. This is plus six moxie. Uh, I'll use the sweet sword just because I want to balance things out a bit because my moxie is looking a tad low. All right, now let's head farther in. One second. Shank Weems, we're reasonably sure he's dead. Now that's, that's a man I can trust right there. Named Shank? Dink Scotch Turkinson, drowned in a whiskey barrel. It's what he would have wanted. The ground here seems reasonably soft. Sure. Hey, I got some decent whiskey. Nice. Adam El... Adam El... Almada. They got him coming and go. Oh no, stop. Old dead Tom. Took us kind of long to get around to this. Fred Deeks. Couldn't remember the rhyme about which snakes are poisonous. Uh, I think it's like... Uh, crap, what is it? It's red, black, yellow... Something mellow... Yellow, black, red... You're dead? Uh, fucking make stuff up on the spot. Like, ooh, cures poison. That'll be good. <laughs> I was going to say that that'll be good when I fight a billion snakes again. And now, now old Flint died as he lived, screaming. Yes, Annette Jangle, first lady bicyclist to ride off cliff. Yes, riding boots. Plus one maximum AP plus three. Hey, th those aren't half bad. Plus one maximum AP plus one armor. This is plus three speed, and I prefer speed over armor because my uh because my stats are decently high, and I have a lot of uh, healing magic like blood beans, and I just uh, want to go first. 
because then I can smack the shit out of people. Uh, Lavender Cranks, inventor of the external combustion engine. Uh, the remains of a picnic. Luke, loot it. Gothic cameo. Oof. Alright, sugared pork bowls. Yeah. Uh, and Vienna blood sausage. Well, now let's check out to the right, and then we can head even further in. Uh, professional sword swallower. Yes. Dynamite Jim Fresca. All the bits we could find. Yes. Tombstone is big, fancy, and has a door on it. Uh, inside is a document and a weird little object. Read the document. Uh, describes a ta Taunton, the burial wishes of Chet Buttersley, and a weird sequence of letters. Ooh, another puzzle. B T L I T R. Huh. Uh, take the object. Key fragment. Nice leave uh pick the lock sure you successfully pick the lock uh read the document o h l g h e uh l g h e huh uh take the object key fragment leave Ooh, safe cracking good thing i got that one pull out your stethoscope crack your knuckles and perform a complicated grave robbery Read the document. O I E H T E. All right. Uh, take the object. Key fragment. Now to solve the puzzle. Okay. Huh. So I wrote all of the letters down. Let me just take a look at this one again. Uh, no, not this one. Hold on. So I wonder. Why are there spaces in between the letters? It's as if uh, th th there's supposed to be other things there. And then. Why are they in ascending order of difficulty? Oh. Oh, ho hold on, hold on, uh, let me, hold on, if we, if we do everything, and then we write them one on top of the other, so, uh, the first one goes on top, then the second one goes, uh, un underneath that, hold on, uh, let me try to explain this, okay, so, you write this string of letters first, this right here, and then uh, you write this string of letters underneath those letters, and this one uh, underneath uh, the second group, and then you just read it vertically. So it's Boot Hill Eighth Tree. So the message is. B O O T H I L L E I G H T H T R E. Well, damn. Because I, I already uh, did that. I already checked the tree and found it. So I assume that these key fragments, you assemble it. Tontan key. And then you go here. Uh, Tontan treasure chest. Ooh. Chest was hidden behind a secret door in the trunk of Re Reboot Hill. Open it up. Uh, chest it contains a lone but extremely large gemstone in a document describing, describing the tone time, which you apparently won despite not even signing up for it. Unbreakable Ruby! Holy Jesus, that's for a lot of money. I'm gonna have to uh, sell uh, this stuff and just become fucking mega loaded at one point. Ooh! Here we go. Plot three. Uh, Xavier J. Hornhog run, ran for mayor right off a cliff. Gina Slapradish ate too many wasps. Lucky Vinnie Pike is bound to run out sooner or later. He 
He hasn't died yet, and they make a uh, tombstone for him. Hazel Batchley embroidered herself to death. That one guy. Yeah, you know the one. Yeah, him. Ah, oh, I know that guy. Brad Hagen. Oops. Uh, wrong button. The most stinkingly rat-faced man any of us have ever seen. Uh, the Stanretta Minkelson tried to eat a live eagle on a dare. The ground... Uh, <laughs> oh boy, a handful of loose teeth. Uh, nice. Looks like the eagle knocked out all her teeth on the way down. Whoa! Hey there, pal. Uh, I didn't see there. Uh, doesn't seem particularly threatening, apart from being a general reminder of your own mortality. Alright, I'll talk to him. Uh, hi. Who are you? My name's Bernard. But shh, lower your voice. They'll hear us. Who, the cultists? Shh, yes. Oh, the cultists? Th they're here? Okay. Not a fan? They're reanimating dead people's skeletons. I don't want to be re reanimated. It sounds horrible. Can you imagine having to walk around without your skin on? How embarrassing. Not to mention cold. Sure will. Plus, I mean, dying's hard enough. Who wants to come back to life just when you get used to being dead, right? I could see that. Plus, can you do something? Or, please, can you do something? I don't want them to find me. Okay, I'll let you know when it's safe. Great, thanks. I'll just hang back here until the coast is clear. Alright, thanks. What was his name? Whatever, I'll go read the tombstones. Uh, Paulette, uh... Tooth fairy died of a disease we don't have a name for yet. Skull chips, uh, exploding skull syndrome. Uh, terrible scoffing champion. Ooh, all right. You're not making it past this barrier of whir whirling bones without, well, making it so there's no whirling bones anymore. Dispel them. The magical prowess makes short work of the flimsy magic holding the bones together. Nothing to it. Suzanne Boingstrom, buried with her treasured collection of dog ears. Hey guys, these cultists look like they're ban barely maintaining, maintaining control over that skeleton. Uh, interrupt their... Uh, no, let's wait. You hide behind a tombstone and wait. After a few moments, the skeleton rests itself from the cultist's control and goes on a rampage. Bone and teeth fly everywhere. None of them belong to the skeleton, if that gives you any indication of how the fight turns out. Seemingly satisfied with the carnage it caused, the skeleton scratches something into the ground and then shuffles off to the south. Oof. Uh, let's check this out. A uh, black book on the pedestal? Fundamentals of Nexmex! Yay! Skeletal buddy! <gasps> I can get Skeleton Gary! All of the above! Yes! No, I, I don't care! Alright, listen to me. You conniving narrator. If you don't allow me to summon Gary, but dead, I'm going to shoot you. With my desert six gun and my revolting brooch. Uh, dark arts are no laughing matter. Pa! Ha ha! I laugh at the face of them. Uh, read it! Yeah, raise skeletal buddy! Uh, ooh, white hair. Minus three moxie. Bah! You can't even see my hair. I have a cultist mask. Grutch. Must be its name, huh? Thread room. Nothing will have but bones and teeth. Yeah, sounds like a cultist. Peninsula, Peninsula Wackersley. Nice lady, but really unfortunate name. Who boy. I'm assuming she drowned. Nothing in here but three bedrolls and a single stale smell. Uh, hastily constructed, very shallow privy. Who oh boy. Uh, uh, let's investigate here. And then, uh, here we go. Sweet smelling flowers. Hey, let's go in. Investigate. A burn scroll. I can, uh, add this to my, uh, uh, burn school, uh, examine it, uh, bad shape and you can't make out anything new, but this is the clue to where the whereabouts of the necromancer, you stick it into your journal. Got it. Alright, chief. Well, now I'm going to equip this back in, uh, and that should be the end of it. I mean, we cleared Reboot Hill, 
I might farm for a couple more uh, materials off camera, but other than that, uh, I should be good. So, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye!